This is The Top, where I interview entrepreneurs who are number one or number two in their industry in terms of revenue or customer base. You'll learn how much revenue they're making, what their marketing funnel looks like, and how many customers they have. I'm now at $20,000 per talk. Five and six million. He is hell-bent on global domination. We just broke our 100,000 unit soul mark. And I'm your host, Nathan Latka. Okay, Top Tribe, this week's winner of the 100 bucks is Rhett Gillins. He's in the restaurant industry, and he feels stuck. He wants to start his own software business. So congratulations, Rhett, for your guys' chance to win 100 bucks every Monday morning. Simply subscribe to the podcast on iTunes now in order to enter, and then text the word Nathan to 33444 to prove that you subscribed. Top Tribe, you know I don't have a lot of time to waste. That's why I use FreshBooks to send out invoices and make sure I'm collecting my money. To get your free month, go to NathanLatka.com forward slash FreshBooks and enter the top in the How Did You Hear About Us section. Nathan Latka here. This is episode 584. Coming up tomorrow morning, you're going to learn from Raviv Turner of Caliber Mines, which has raised $1.1 million and is currently helping 12 customers close B2B leads using more intelligence in a pretty unique way. Good morning, folks. Nathan Latka here. Our guest today is Lauren Sullivan. She is the co-founder of a company called Flight Fox, which I have recently started using to help me book you know, multi-country travel uh, to Japan, Thailand, Europe, all over the place. Uh, and they also help have helped me understand how to best leverage things like rewards points on my Chase credit card preferred and Sapphire, etc., etc. So I wanted to have Lauren on because I'm a fan of the product and they're growing very fast. Lauren, are you ready to take us to the top? I am. All right, great. So tell us first, what does, you know, I try to describe it how I use it, but what does Flight Fox do and how do you generate revenue? Sure. Uh, So Flight Fox is an online, real-time platform of human travel experts who manage travel for individuals, companies, and organizations. Um, So our revenue model, uh, we charge a fee for every trip, uh, which is unlike all of our competitors who make most of their money from commissions. So uh, this is, you know, very much a pay-as-you-go model. Yes. And how's it work? So, so what would someone expect to pay? Uh, so if you're an individual like yourself, um, you would come to the site and you would tell us, you know, where you want to go. And if you have any frequent flyer miles or any credit card points, um, anything like that, um, you'll launch a trip. You, we authorize your credit card um, for the, the minimum fee is $50. Um, and that's for just a normal trip, either going one way or round trip um, to anywhere in the world. Uh, and then you'll get um, – instantly match to an expert on our side and that you'll talk back and forth. Um, you know, they'll ask any questions that they need to ask and then they'll give you uh, an itinerary or three, um, depending on, you know, what's, what kind of itineraries are available um, for your trip. And then, you know, you decide which one you'd like or um, tell them, you know, that the layover is too long or whatever, and we'll go back and search again. Uh, and then we'll, uh, help you book. And for, for companies, it's a little different. We, we book for companies. So we manage, we manage a bit more for them. And so what is the, what's like, you know, an individual might pay 50 per trip. What would some, like, what do some people pay when they're doing bigger trips or longer trips or more layover trips? Yeah. So, um, the, definitely the more complex the trip, uh, the more expensive just because it takes us a lot longer to search and, and find a great itinerary for you. Um, so say for a multi-city trip, um, to three different places, it'll be a fee of a hundred dollars. So it's $25 extra per place. And for companies, um, we charge a $30 search fee and then, um, a booking fee of twenty dollars per person per place. Yep, yep. It's it's great, and guys, I will tell you too. They have so much patience. Poor Roland, the guy I'm working with right now that Fox <laughs> hooked me up with. I've changed my mind like twenty thousand times, and yep. I have like five or six different itineraries here. And he's going, Nathan, have you decided yet? Um, <laughs> my Lauren, my biggest thing, and I don't, I forget if I emailed you or your co one of your co founders when I was first testing this. Um, mm-hmm. Is it so nerve wracking to put money up like before yeah. knowing is this thing going to work? And what I really loved about you guys, I mean, you do have a guarantee and you honored it with me. So I'm, I'm assuming mm-hmm. this is company wide. You honor this. Correct me if I'm yeah. wrong. But if they don't sit, guys, if, if Flight Flex doesn't save you money, like versus yeah. you booking yourself via Expedia, you don't have to pay these fees. Is that right, Lauren? 
That's correct. So if you give us, um, you know, a valid quote up front, like if you've already searched um, for your trip and you found, you know, a thousand dollars on Expedia, if we can't beat that by our fees, we found our fees fifty dollars. If we can't find you um, a price for nine fifty or less, then we don't charge our fee at all, and we and we let you know you've found the best itinerary um, and there's nothing else that we could do. So at least you have the peace of mind that you know you're not getting ripped off. Yeah, no, it's great. And then it let, so that's helpful to understand a product. Take us back to some history here and, and let's learn more about you. When did you launch this business? Uh, we launched it in 2012 and it's been through um, a lot of different cycles, a lot of different pivots um, on the way it works. Uh, but we originally launched it as a contest based crowdsource system where uh, you would launch you would launch a trip um, and say you know that you wanted the the cheapest flight to Paris say um, and there would be multiple experts um, on the other side competing against each other to find the cheapest price um, but we found in the end that you know, there were a small number of experts winning the majority of those contests. So um, I think it was in 2013 or early 2014, we switched the model to a um, one-on-one model where we would just match you to, you know, the expert who was likely going to win your contest in the end anyway. So you don't have to go back and forth with multiple people. Um, So that, yeah, so that really changed the way our our business worked and the way uh, customers were feeling about the product because, you know, there there wasn't so much back and forth. How many experts do you have uh, today? Uh, we only have 20 today okay. at our, at our peak, we had like 5,000, um, but we kind of just handpicked the the best ones. And what's from that in, group. are they full-time employees or is this like an Uber driver? They're like contractual. They're contractors. Okay. Contractors. And what is, I mean, what is an average, like this guy Roland I'm talking to, how does he make money off flight Fox? What's in it for him? Yeah. So the, the fee that you pay the $50, he gets a percentage of that, um, on every trip. Okay. What, like you guys split it 50, 50? Uh, no, we, uh, so, uh, Roland will get 65% and uh-huh. we get 35%. Okay. So that's uniform across all experts. Yes. Got it. And, and are they, I mean, you probably know these, some of these folks pretty intimately cause you cut them down oh, from yeah. 5,000 to 20. I mean, are they doing this kind of stuff full time? Uh, are they making enough yeah. income to do it full time? Most of them are full time. That's amazing. That's great. What yeah, is the, great. what's some other usage metrics? Like brag a little bit. How, how many, like, I don't know what the metric is. What's the usage metric flights booked? How many flights booked have you done over the you know last year? Um, or what's important to you? What, what usage metric are you measuring? Uh, at the moment, you know, we're, we're mainly focusing on companies and organizations um, just because since 2012, we've been, mainly catering to consumers and individuals. Um, but our cost of acquisition is, is too high um, for the revenue that we make from um, customers generally. Can you specify that, Lauren? So, so on an individual customer, what would it cost you on average and what would you make? Well, so say for, um, you know, we only make 35% on um, $50. So we're getting like $15, $20 uh, per, uh, per person. And the, you know, the, the normal person travels once a year, maybe on a holiday. Um, so really like to compete against kayak and Expedia and all these big, uh, travel companies, we like, that's just not enough, um, at all to try and acquire customers online. So we've started going after companies and organizations where they spend, you know, they're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars per year on travel and you know they're they're booking travel every week kind of thing so it's it's definitely a a better um yeah yeah a a better model for us going forward how many currently uh let's just say in january 2017 how many companies will book at least one trip for through you uh at least 50 okay that's a pretty healthy i mean that's a it's a pretty healthy group of companies there yeah yeah it's great and what's Uh, the go ahead I'm just going to say we probably have a group of five to 10 companies that are booking probably 30 trips a month. Okay. Five to 10. Yeah. That's super helpful. Okay. So five to 10. And what's like the team size of those companies, those five to 10? Uh, It ranges. Like we have, we have like some startup um, companies that have, 
well, relatively called a startup, you know, that have 80 employees and, you know, a ton of them are sales people. So they travel a lot. Um, but then we, we're working with one really cool organization that's a missionary organization. So they're sending people all over the world all the time. Um, so, you know, they're booking groups of 50 people plus um, every month. That's amazing. What about uh, talking about funding history? Have you guys raised capital? And if so, how much? Uh, yeah, we raised it in 2012. Uh, we raised about 850K, uh, um, and that was just before we went into YC. And did you raise any after YC, or you didn't need to? No, we didn't need to. That's great. So, so, and when was YC for you guys? When did you go through that? Uh, that was in summer of 2012. Okay, got it. And then uh, current team members, not including your 25 contractors, how many full-time team members does the company have currently? Uh, currently we have four. Okay. All based in Boulder or you guys travel a lot, right? Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> everyone's remote. <laughs> That's great. You use flight Fox yeah. to get around and for team meetups, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. Okay. Very cool. So let me ask you a few more questions here. Is this, I mean, if I was you, I, well, I'm trying to think what I would be scared of. And one thing that I would be really scared of is, uh, like if, if the economy does anything wacky, if there's any risk in markets, one of the first things that get cut in companies typically is travel. Have you done anything to kind of soften the blow you would take if something like that happened in terms of creating predictable revenue streams? Uh, honestly, no. <laughs> um, yeah, no, we, we haven't, we haven't thought thought through that. My gut tells me you would get create. I mean, you've pivoted so many times since you started. My gut tells me you which guys are resourceful. You would just figure it out. Yeah. That's it's kind of, yeah, we've pivoted so many different times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, and also, you know, always had the question of, you know, whether we should shut down or keep going. Yep. And, um, yeah, that's just like a, a never ending question. <laughs> how, do you, how do you, and Lauren, thanks for being so transparent about that, by the way, because right. it's something that I think a lot of people go through, uh, and yeah. they never talk about. So mm -hmm. how do you, first off, just talking to this with your team might, many people say, I can't even talk about potentially shutting this down. It makes everybody nervous. I might leave, you know, they might leave. How do you, how do you think about those conversations and why are you still doing it today? Um, I think we do it because, you know, honestly, we just, you know, we don't want to go back to working for someone else <laughs> and sure. And sure. You know, we could start, uh, you know, try a different idea, like, you know, not even in the travel space, you know, we've had so many ideas in the past, but we know like that we're sitting on something good. Um, you know, there are so many people that enjoy the service and love the service and keep coming back. And, you know, even through all the changes that we've made, you know, they keep coming back because they know we're trying to make it the, you know, the best it can be. Um, you know, and we've had, uh, you know, difficult conversations and, um, you know, been through many things like we, you know, we, <clears throat> we had a, uh, a big office in Canada, um, for a while and had to fire everyone because, you know, it just wasn't working. Um, you know, so we've, we've been through so many different, uh, you know, things, uh, you know, how, how to run a company and, and everything like that. But in the end, yeah, I think, I, I, I don't have like a simple answer, I suppose. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's, it's just up to the person, up to the team to like, um, to keep carrying on and keep pushing on. Cause I think that's the one thing about, uh, startups and ideas in general is it's all about execution and like, keep, you know, keep on trucking kind of thing. What is the, uh, if you don't mind me asking in 2016, just cause you have mm -hmm. so many different revenue models, what was total revenue in 2016? Uh, total revenue was about, uh, seven to 800 K. Okay. So, I mean, so that's, I mean, that's pretty healthy, right? So that's a lot of people book, you know, that's a lot of $15 payments from individuals or larger payments from companies, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and are you guys, it, it's, you haven't raised obviously in a while, but with four mm -hmm. full-time folks, I, I imagine you guys are somewhere close to, to break even, right? Yeah. 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 Are. Yeah. And oh, oh, I guess actually something else here of the 700, 800 K of the major, majority of that 65% of it ish goes to your experts, right? 
Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. So you have your plan around with around somewhere around 200K in cash flow after that, which you split up amongst kind of uh, salaries for the rest of your team and maybe some user acquisition stuff. Yeah, and, you know, and a lot of it costs. Yeah, lots of costs. You don't have an office though, yeah. right? No, we That's don't. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. So do you guys think, um, did you think you'll raise another round or no? Uh, it really depends. Um, like at the moment, I, I said, you know, we're going after. Uh, corporate and organizations, um, and we we haven't really found our sweet spot for customer acquisition yet. Um, so until we find that, we don't want to raise any more capital. Yeah, that makes good sense. Uh, very good, Lauren. Well, hey, I, again, appreciate you being so vulnerable. This is one of my favorite episodes in a long time because uh, you talk about the hard stuff, you know, laying yeah. off all office in Canada. I mean, this stuff is not easy, but it happens all the time, and no one ever talks mm -hmm. about it. Okay, Top Tribe, as many of you know, I sold Hayo, and everyone is always asking me what my expenses were when I was building Hayo. Well, a big expense was that I spent over three grand per month on financial services to keep me out of trouble in terms of taxes. You know, my mom would always harbor me, Nathan, you gotta keep all your receipts and put them in a freaking box or something to make sure you don't get an audit or things like this. I'm like, Mom, I'm a millennial. You think I'm gonna keep all these receipts? I now use FreshBooks. I use their mobile app to take a picture of receipts, and it makes taxes a cinch. Additionally, I don't have to hire a $3,000 per month person to manage all my finances. It's like saving so much money and my mom's happy. Additionally, I don't waste a bunch of time creating invoices. I use their templates and I can avoid using Word templates or Excel files. I just use FreshBooks to quickly send out invoices and it works like a charm. To get your free first month, go to NathanLatka.com forward slash FreshBooks and enter the top in the How Did You Hear About Us section. Again, go to NathanLatka.com forward slash FreshBooks and enter the top in the How Did You Hear About Us section. Very good. Okay, so let's uh, let's wrap up here with the final five questions I've got for you. Number one, sure. what is your favorite business book, Lauren? Um, either uh, Founders at Work or uh, Good to Great. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Uh, the the Whole Foods um, CEO, Mackey. John. Yeah, John Mackey. Yep. Number three. Uh, is there a favorite online tool you have, like Acuity Scheduling? Uh, pocket Sniff. Pocket what? Pocket Sniff. <laughs> yes, yeah. like S, like Smith. Smith with your nose? No, no, Smith with an M oh, for Mary. Smith. Okay, Pocket Smith. What does it do? Uh, it's like a personal financing um, application. Interesting. Okay, number four, yes or no, do you get eight hours of sleep every night? <sighs> Uh, currently, but it changes depending on what we're working on. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what's your situation? Married, single, do you have kids? Uh, married. Okay. No kids? No kids. Okay. And do you mind me asking how old you are? Yeah. Uh, 31. 31. Okay. So last question. Take us back 11 years. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? Um, to kind of stop working for someone else and and just start building something of your own, anything. <laughs> <laughs> Top tribe, there you have it from Lauren, one of the founders of Flight Fox. She wishes she would just start doing her own thing earlier on. They did about mm -hmm. 700 to 800K in 2016 total revenue, paying about 65% of that out to over 25 contractors, maybe more in 2016. But now they're down to 25 experts that help you book travel. I'm using it. I'm loving it. It's really something that's saving me a lot of time and it's very, very financially uh, worth it for us. So they raised 850K back in, I believe she said 2012, 2013. That was pre Y Combinator. Currently have four full-time team members that are all remote. Again, trying to help make it easy, especially for companies to book travel online and do it in a most efficient way. Lauren, thank you for taking us to the top. Thanks a lot. If you enjoyed Lauren today, go back and listen to his seam yesterday. He's the CEO of a company called Sosedo. They did $1.5 million in 2016 revenue. Now they're already up to 200 grand in monthly recurring revenue, helping 200 customers close more leads. Top Tribe, I love giving away free money. I feel like Oprah giving away cars, and I have something special for you today. How many of you have heard our super sharp guests talk about success they've had with Facebook and Google ads? Well, all of you listening right now, yes, if you're listening, you get $100 in free AdWords. Here's how you get it, okay? Again, thanks for listening. Get the free $100 from Google, right, when you sign up with my website host provider, HostGator. Go sign up now to get your free money, hostgator.com forward 
forward slash Nathan. Again, that's hostgator.com forward slash Nathan. Okay, Top Tribe, I'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. And don't forget, before you listen to any other episodes, subscribe on iTunes right now for your chance to win 100 bucks every Monday. 